In the past, I highlighted or described the flimsiness of human accomplishment and heroics by comparing it with the actions of bacteria or bacterium, individual bacteria. These are things like finding similarities, analogous or homologous actions. Some of them were things like a bacterium extracting diseased aspects of another bacterium and leaving it in better health. Being comparable to the actions of a surgeon extracting diseased aspects of another human and leaving it in better health or some bacteria emitting sound frequencies or generating movements that attract other bacteria being similar to the beetles emitting sounds that attract other humans or the movements of Mikhail Baryshnikov that attract humans, or a bacterium carrying a microscopic ball, skillfully evading other bacteria, and then putting that microscopic ball through a microscopic hoop, being similar to, let's say, Michael Jordan doing something similar in basketball. Or some bacteria imitating the behavior of other bacteria, like human actors do. There's many examples like this. And the attempted refutation is to say, well, look, bacteria don't have consciousness. They don't have intelligence. Therefore, they have no symbolic realm to attribute heroism to these actions. And that's completely true. But the question is us. Do we attribute heroic value to those actions? Do we call them accomplishments? And the answer is not in the same sense as we do our similar actions, and that is because we attribute great importance. We make a big deal out of our intelligence. We say if we intermingle our intelligence with actions that, yes, are similar to the actions of these bacteria, somehow that makes them heroic. That makes them accomplishments. By the way, another example that I thought about because I was watching what was considered to be the greatest athletic accomplishment in human history, which is the climbing in free solo of the El Capitan Cliff by Alex Honnold, that was comparable to certain actions by bacteria where they have um, the capacity, some special bacterium and bacteria of going, traveling through rocks, distances, and under difficult conditions um, as well. And the distance of the travel by that bacterium under those difficult conditions was relative to the bacteria in terms of size, the same as the size of El Capitan was in relation to the body of a human, in this case, the body of Alex Honnold. So, once again, I don't want to delve too much in the comparisons of heroic human actions, but you can see this idea of intelligence there as well, because you have him talking about visualizing uh, how important, in fact, that was the most crucial element in his words in order to accomplish this action, and quite generally, it is the... Um, intermingling, once again, of human intelligence with these actions in the world that are considered to grant the action itself the status of accomplishment or heroic accomplishment. Now, 
What is the refutation of that? Well, it's called the brain in the jar. If you have a brain that somehow is kept alive in a jar by pouring nutrients, let's say, or maintaining a certain pressure, can that brain, through visualizing, through doing all the things that we regard to be heroic, when those thoughts can be intermingled with actions in the world, can that brain and that jar, by thinking alone, by doing all these things that we do in this world and we have bodies, can that brain alone be considered to be heroic? Can a brain in a jar be heroic? That's the question. And if it isn't heroic, why does it become heroic when it intermingles with actions in the world which are comparable, which are similar to the actions of bacteria?